Sam, the brain has been called the highest organization of matter in the universe, certainly that we know of. And studying the human brain is fantastic and fiendishly complex. What can we learn about the brain from your expertise, which is what happens to the brain when people die? As you say, I mean, the brain is incredibly complex, and I don't think um, we will ever be able to master every component of it. But yet, um, and different scientists are looking at this from different perspectives. My area is that I deal with people. I'm an intensive care physician, but I'm particularly interested in the brain after a person has died. Why? Because my goal is to bring a person back and make sure they don't suffer brain damage. Mm. So whether we like it or not, we have to study the processes that occur after death inside the brain in order to learn how to manipulate them. And what we've learned is incredible, which is that although most people think that after you stop getting, giving oxygen and uh, blood to the brain, that of course the brain stops functioning, there's no doubt, and that happens within moments. But we don't only have about five minutes before brain cells become permanently damaged. Brain cells are actually much more robust than we realized, and that they can remain viable for hours after death. Mm. So what does that tell us? What that means is, of course, in a normally functioning person, you have to have all of the circuitry of the brain working in tandem uh, like an orchestra that's functioning perfectly well. All the different parts have to generate electricity. They have to send signals across each other for communication to take place, for us to be able to express our consciousness, our thoughts, our feelings, and to live. But actually, as delicate as brain tissue is, it's actually able to withstand a lot more of an insult than we ever realized. Mm. And that therefore has huge ramifications because it means that if we can hone in our science to the brain more precisely, then we can prevent the brain cells from becoming permanently damaged and bring them back. Also bearing in mind though that another major discovery for us is that actually most of the damage that occurs when you stop blood flow mm -hmm. to the brain, in other words, when a person dies, is actually, paradoxically, it's not the period when there's no blood getting into the brain. It's not the period when there's no oxygen getting into brain cells. That's what we used to always think. We mm -hmm. thought, oh, that's what's killing them. It's actually incredible. It's when we restart the heart after someone's been technically gone beyond the threshold of death for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes, or longer. When we get blood and oxygen back inside the brain, it's actually the oxygen itself that becomes poisonous oh. to the brain cells. Oh. The oxygen, in effect, turns into hydrogen peroxide, mm. and it sprays the brain cells with peroxide. And if we don't manipulate that and don't recognize it, it causes brain damage. Mm. So it's a fascinating area uh, with a lot of potential. When the brain dies, we understand that it can come back, but the brain is composed of, uh, of unbelievably number of circuits, of memories that involve thousands or millions of neurons connected in the most sophisticated ways. Does the insult that the lack of oxygen, the, the brain death, does that affect the, the way these memories and these personalities as expressed by these brain structures, can they, can they be maintained or is that disrupted? Well, after a person dies, um the first thing that happens, and this happens in an instant, is that there's not uh, oxygen and, and, and blood supply to the brain shut down, and the person becomes completely unconscious. And by that I mean, I don't mean that their consciousness is lost forever, it's annihilated. It's like someone who's been given a massive drug, an anesthetic, mm -hmm. that's basically shut down their brain circuits, and therefore they become, they have no pain, they have no discomfort, and that's important. So we shouldn't be afraid of death although most people may be, but we shouldn't be afraid of death itself, maybe the events before, but not death itself. Now what happens, of course, is that um, injury may occur to the brain after death for two reasons. One is that the lack of oxygen getting into the brain will cause gradual and progressive cellular damage to different parts of the brain that would ordinarily be involved with our memories, our thoughts, our feelings, everything that makes us who we are, the modulation of the psyche, the consciousness. And then what will also happen is, obviously, if we leave a person, then we never see them again. If we do manage to restart the heart and bring them back through resuscitation science, we get a second hit, a second injury, which is the introduction of oxygen back into the brain. The brain is very inflamed and swollen, and the oxygen is converted into 
uh, chemicals such as hydrogen peroxide that can damage the cells themselves. So of course, if you then watch this process and you, know, you wake somebody up, say a week or two after they've gone through this uh, cardiac arrest or clinical death, um, if we've managed to manipulate those processes, then technically we should get a whole person back if we've managed to manipulate it correctly and appropriately, um, we should get a whole person back. And those brain structures, those networks of cells, should reform and a person should not be affected. Unfortunately, though, um, it's a very complex process. Uh, our science hasn't caught up, um, and neither has our implementation of medical care across the country, where you have different standards. As a consequence, it's possible for some people to have some disruptions. So some people may have memory loss. Uh, they may develop uh, cognitive changes, such as depression. Mm. Uh, they may also develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, so it all depends on what residual damage is left, if any, from these two injury processes, combined with the medical intervention that we've tried to do to stop them as to what will happen at the end.